posture has been ignored in these recent years. Today, more and more people are becoming less physically active. On top of less activity, prolonged usage of technology such as smartphones are causing people to repeat patterns of bad posture. When it comes to these addictive devices, it is fairly difficult to notice our bodily positions when using them. Another problem comes mostly from being in school. Children at young ages are sent to school where they are expected to sit for hours and hours. This pattern continues from the start of grade school all the way through college. Excessive repetitions of bad posture conditions the body to that state and becomes overall less efficient in other normal activities. This happens due to muscle tightness and weakened muscles. When muscles are shortened or used for too long, they become tight, while underused muscles are weakened and tend to fatigue quickly when applied to physical activity. All these factors contribute to inefficient movements and muscular imbalances. Today, we are going to look into how muscular imbalance distorts posture. But before we can do that, we have to know what bad posture looks like. So here we have two images. Can you guess which image displays poor posture? <laughs> okay, I know you chose the image to the left, which is correct. It was intended to exaggerate and clearly distinguish muscular imbalance. Most of the time it would not be this easy. To make it even easier to see the muscular imbalance, we can draw a line down the middle. Marked by the red circles are the key joints that carry the burden of the weight above it besides the circle located on the glenohumeral joint, or the shoulders. The weight here on the shoulder joint comes from the arms. Coming back to the line, we can see that it lines up with the pelvis. Normally, the center of gravity should be pretty close to the red circle in the pelvic region. However, this image does not portray the correct center of gravity. The center of gravity is actually more accurately defined by the green line. Looking at the image to the right, the red circles are much closer this time to the vertical line. Since the center of gravity is closer to these weight-bearing joints, it allows for more equal distribution of weight. Equal distribution of weight at a standing posture allows all of these muscles to work efficiently. Here, we can see muscular imbalance on the left versus equal distribution on the right. As you can see in the left image, one muscle is shorter than the other. Now let's pretend that this is happening in the pelvic region. Now that we can relate the posture with muscular imbalance, we can clearly see that the tight muscle problem comes from the anterior muscles. These muscles would include the hip flexors, the quadriceps, and some abdominal muscles. At the same time, the posterior muscles are actually lengthened. With all of these factors involved, the tight muscles in the anterior portion are creating more of a pull while the posterior muscles such as the glutes and hamstrings are lengthened, allowing the pelvis into anterior tilt. With the anterior pelvic tilt, the center of gravity is shifted forward. This is a problem due to the nature of the spine. Anterior pelvic tilt slightly moves the burden up the spine where it is actually weaker. This distortion eventually leads to pain and injury. 